All right, hey, welcome back to our channel. I am visited today by a very special person. It's my daughter from New York City. No, not, in, not New York any longer. She is from California. So, um, hi, Brittany, thanks for coming in for such a, well, you were in for your announcement of your- Engagement. Engagement, so congratulations on that. This episode is about her specialty of uh, uh, it's a wine expert. It's called a sommelier. 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 Okay. Sommelier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I thought what we do is, you know, when we go camping, RVing, typically we we may have beers or we may have, you know, soda pops and those those types of things. But I thought, you know, there may be some there may be some sophisticated people out there that want to have maybe a glass of wine with their bratwurst or their burger or their pork chop. So while she was in, I asked her if she would sit with us and do this video and uh, she did. She said, yes, I will. And um, so I'm gonna let her explain uh, some of the things that you might wanna look for when you wanna shop for wines for your meals. So, so okay, so you're, a, a, Sommi, Sommi, I never can get it right. Sommelier, you can call it a Somm. A Somm, okay. Short. Yeah, and um, so, you know, your mom and I, we typically just uh, eat burgers, brats, and maybe some hot dogs. Not too often in the hot dogs, but, you know, but sometimes, you know, a glass of wine. Now, I'm a red wine drinker, mm -hmm. uh, and your mom's kind of learning how to, how to drink red wines or something, but I thought maybe, um, it would be good to explain what would go well with, you know, a bratwurst <laughs> or what would go well with, you know, uh, a hamburger. So, okay. So, what, what, what goes well with burgers and brats? So, when you're thinking about, you know, burgers and brats, they're like, they're, you know, they're fattier, kind of rich foods. Right. So, there's two ways that you could pair um, wine with these. Um, you could you could complement it, so you could get, you know, kind of a, a big, you know, full-bodied um, wine that would, right. you know, complement it, or you could do something to contrast, so you could get something that's light and crisp and lean, okay. um, which is how I like to pair my foods. You know, if I have some, you know, a burger with the fat, and you know, sometimes they can be a little oily, or the cheese, right. and you've got the condiments. I want something that's gonna kind of <laughs> clean that. <laughs> <laughs> I want something that's going to clean that out of my palate so that, oh. you know, I, it doesn't feel cloying, it doesn't feel heavy, you know, you take a nice refreshing drink of something right. you know, and it cleans, cleans that out of your mouth. Yep. So dry, clean, you know, refreshing wines, um, you know, kind of my favorite thing to pair is, you know, a very light bubbly. Mm -hmm. um, it's really like a universal pairing. Um, you got the, the for the, like like fatty foods for fatty foods. I mean, fried food in particular and fatty foods, bubbly. You know, you could do champagne. You could do you know a California sparkling. Mm -hmm. You could do a Spanish sparkling called cava. Most of these are going to be dry. Mm -hmm. um, which is what I yeah. You know, which is what I you like, like. I like dry wines. Yeah. And they're easy drinking. Um, and and the you know the bubbles kind of like when you have you know a soda or a sprite. Mm -hmm you know, it feels very like crisp and clean in the right. mouth. Um, and so in that way, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a perfect pairing because it's in contrast to what you're okay. eating. Right. Um, and so if you're looking at the labels on bubbles, there's a couple of things that will tell you that it's... So you'll go to the store with me later? Yeah, we can go to the store. Okay, all right. There's a, there's a couple of things um, on the labels that you can look for that will tell you, especially on bubbles, that it's dry. And okay. one of those words is brute. Okay. B R U T or extra brute, right? Um, or you may see um, the word nature, just you know, spelled nature, okay. um, on the label, and those are going to tell you that um, the remaining sugar mm -hmm. in the bottle is very low, okay, um, or that they don't add a tremendous amount of sugar um, when they're making the the bubbly wine. So, and some of the uh, so you worked in some really fine restaurants in New York, and I know you helped, you know, pair those things up. I mean, so is it? common to have like um, at some of the nicer restaurants I mean, maybe not a burger but you know they may have yeah I, mean, I know some of the ones you have been they had really nice hamburgers yeah uh would they would they would you pair a wine with a burger yeah in the, okay totally right. and um you know uh, some of the you know some of the i know you like red wine mm -hmm. so 
you know, there's two ways you could go about pairing. If, I know you like your red blends, so you could have a robust red blend right. um, that's also dry, yep. um, that has, you know, nice, like, character and some fruit there that isn't going to overpower the burger. Or, you know, if it's a hot day like today, yep. we could, you know, choose. I guess that makes sense. I, now you say that, I mean, I, you wouldn't want, any, like, a heavy... Like I wouldn't want a heavy beer, right? Yeah. I'd want like a, a land shark, something yeah. kind of light, yeah. local beers and stuff. Exactly, so. you know. Or maybe maybe if you're you know you're camping in the in the fall, you know that's when you want to have your big robust Cabernet Sauvignon because it kind of pairs not only with the food and maybe the food of the season, but the temperature as well. Right. Okay. But as it warms up, maybe you want like a chilled red, which is very popular in the summer, and you could choose reds that are, you know, lighter bodied. Mm -hmm but still have all those, you know, flavors that you like of a red, you know, some of the, you know, some of them can still be a little smoky. Some can have, you know, dark red fruits, um, even can, you know, some can have, you know, kind of earthy t uh, flavors like mushroom and, mm. and, and notes like that yeah. in the wine um, that would make it a nice compliment. Um, but, you know, still be crisp. You could chill it right. and it would go great with the burger. Okay. But, bur yeah, Pinot Noir, <coughs> Gamay, you know, these are grapes that would be great pairings with okay. hamburgers. All right, well, very yeah. good. All right, well, let's head to the store and we'll try, we'll try I'll let her show me which ones to get and uh, we'll see what we, what we can come up with. Okay. All right, let's, let's go. go. All right, bye. <laughs> So see, these are some of the ones I was talking about, the Apothic Red. Yep. I think, is it the blend? This is yeah, a soft is a blend. red blend from California. Yeah. Velvety and smooth. Yeah, it's either not like those. We drink those quite often. Well, I shouldn't say quite often. We drink them sometimes when we have a spaghetti dinner or something. So these are probably a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, maybe Pinot Noir. Those are the grapes that you're going to find. And, um, yeah, and, and blends most likely. Go local wine. Marcella, I think that's their specialty. All right, so we talked about wines for camping. Um, you know, accessible, portable, and delicious. Right. Um, so here we go. The wines in the can are perfect. Um, I guess it makes sense. You wouldn't yeah. want to have them breaking as exactly. you're driving around. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you can you can toss them in the cooler. You don't have to worry about the glass. And what's nice about these cans, and it's quite deceptive, is this is a half bottle of wine. Oh, this really? can equals a half bottle of this. So two of these. Done. Did not know that. <laughs> Got to be careful. They will knock you out. Fast. <laughs> um, all right. So I mean, I think. You know, some of the wines we talked about that are great for camping are things, you know, that are, you know, light and crisp, especially mm -hmm. when it's hot in the summer, you know, you want to, you don't want to weigh yourself down by something that's too heavy. Um, so, a, you know, a good Chardonnay would be great for the chicken. Um, even a Pinot Grigio would be nice for that. You know, these are affordable. It's a half bottle of wine for $5. Right. Um, it looks, it looks expensive by the can, right? But yeah. when you stop and think about the actual cost of a bottle. Yeah, I mean, and Yeah, exactly. So, Chardonnay, pretty classic, you know, with your chicken, even your, your pork, your brats, those would be um, a good pairing. Uh, Pinot Grigio, you could just, I mean, you could you could drink it out of the can. I mean, nice, <laughs> right. crisp. You could even pour this on some ice when it's really hot. Okay. Top it with a little seltzer, make a, um, a, uh, a wine spritz. Okay. Um, bubbly wine, we, uh, you know, if you want to cheers, have a, you know, a little a little start to the celebration. We could get some sparkling wine in the can. Um, now, like I said, I I kind of drink just regular red sure. wine, dry, I like a dry wine. So mm -hmm. if, that, if that's not something that's paired well with um, our types of foods, right? Um, then these would be good uh, alternatives? These would be good, good, like, you know, for if you want white or rosé, but there's certainly reds that um, pair well with the foods. Okay. So 
you know, we're thinking about, again, you know, we want our, you know, we want our wines in the summer to be kind of you know, like our clothes in light, the summer, refreshing. light and refreshing. Right. You know, it's not going to weigh you down. So we're going to think about some, you know, light bodied reds, like a, you know, a Pinot Noir or um, maybe a Cabernet Franc. These can tend to be a little bit lighter. Lighter. Um, and that makes sense to me. I and you can that chill way. them. Yep. And they'll also go really well um, with the food. Okay. And if you're thinking about, you know, something like a larger format, you could always go with the box wine. Again, um, you're getting three liters in here. So, you know, a little bit of... Now, why does that sound so cheap? I mean, I've always thought wine. box wine. Like, who buys boxed wine? Well, box wine is really improved. I mean, and I won't want all the, the bought air out yeah, here. Right. But a lot, box wine has improved. You know, a lot of the first wine I had was Franzia out of a box, you know, and that's kind of sweet and syrupy and, um, you know, not super appealing to everybody. Um, but we, you know, we think of box wine as cheap because it's in a plastic bag right. and it's in a box. Um, and. You know, it in a way it is. You know, it's not the fanciest wine, but it's it's serving its purpose. Right. And it, there is a there is a plastic pack. So in this here. is another possible way to carry maybe some bulk wine. Exactly. When you're traveling. Yeah, and they've and they've and the um, the quality of these have improved over the years. Um, right. Because you know people aren't just just packaging you know kind of sweet junk anymore. They're putting you know. Um, Good quality wines. Good wine. quality wines. Right. Or really the wines that go in these are the wines that are meant to be consumed now. These right. aren't wines for age quality. Right, right. Oh, That's yeah. Good. So That's this is point. a box of Chardonnay. And it's they, what, 15, 15, 16 bucks? And this is three, three liters. liters. So if we compare that to a bottle, mm -hmm. this is 750 milliliters. Right. So a liter is a little bit bigger than, than this. So this is over three bottles of wine. So a good call savings. Yeah. Tell me again about what you were saying about some of these or places that we might want to consider yeah. camping. So like, yeah, Oregon. Oregon, like it yeah. it's you know it's a, it's a beautiful state, and the Willamette Valley, um, you know, is is where they grow um, most of their Pinot Noir. This is like the the American Pinot Noir is um, from Willamette. So okay. again, you know, the price is nice there, but yeah. these, you know, picturesque wise, and a place that you might want to camp wise, like Oregon would be you know kind of a beautiful place to do that and enjoy the wines with it. Yeah. Also, when you know we're camping and we're thinking about wine, um, you know, with the cans we got the pop top. With wine bottles, there's normally a cork. So if you're thinking, you know, camp-friendly wines, um, we want to be able to get the cap off quickly. So a lot of wines um, come with a screw cap. So if you're looking for you know camping wine and you don't, you, you, maybe you don't have the wine key, the wine opener, um, you can always look for the, the twist caps. Okay. And uh, that's a, another way to take a bottle on the go. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. By far, you know, the most um, friendly wine for the summer is rosé. You find one that's dry, um, that's crisp, and this these are really going to go great with any foods that are grilled, um, potato chips. <laughs> um, you know, so, are there are there dry white wines? There are dry white wines. Okay. Yeah, so the way to think about dry and sweet wines is really about the um, the uh, the actual, the, the sugar, the residual sugar that's left in the wine after the fermentation. So sometimes wines may actually be sweet, sugary, um, but sometimes white wines might be very fruity, which can come off to some people as uh, sweet. sweet. I know that this is a dry white wine, or dry, sorry, a dry rosé, mm -hmm. but to the, you know, to the average, you know, consumer, you may not know, um, but there's nothing here on the label that's indicating to me that it's sweet. But your dry. average Joe Schmo, mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have to either go with something that somebody recommends to me, yep. or a way to find 
a way to look at it. So some bottles will actually say dry or sweet. The, some will say dry and sweet, but dry and sweet are at the opposite, opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to wine. Um, and so, you know, some wines are meant to be sweet. So they'll either add sugar in to make it a sweet wine, um, and then other wines aren't meant to be sweet, and they ferment to what's called dry. Okay. Um, everything I see in front of me looks like it's gonna be a dry wine. A lot of wines will even show you like, you know, some, some notes on the label. Lively, fruity, bright. And then with some, and this isn't with all bottles, but they'll say, you know, there'll be a calorie con content, and then they'll say less than a gram of sugar. Gotcha. Um, so I don't know this wine and not again not all bottles do that um, or not all producers label that but some do and so and also some of this is probably just trial and error right yeah totally yeah which I guess I'm okay with yeah and you know <laughs> try this bottle I don't like it so much let's try another bottle and to be fair you know like when we're looking at wines you know maybe you look for something that's kind of like middle of the road you know kind of pricing wise okay Sometimes, sometimes, like the cheaper you go, um, that means like the more, it's, it's a bulk wine, they produce it in, in high quantity, um, and wines like that can tend to be sweeter. So maybe price-wise, you know, don't, you don't have to go for the most expensive. So don't maybe break don't, the bank, you don't but have, yeah. at the same time, just don't, don't buy the $5 wine, yeah. maybe the $15 wine. Exactly. Okay. They make it easy for you, all the wines in cans and bottles. You can get your, your bubbly if you if you want to have a toast. It even comes in the cute bottles. You can get you know your Cabernet Sauvignon for the you know the, the red drinkers. This oh look see this equals three five point six ounce pours. This is three glasses of wine. Wow. Yeah, in this little container. So again, you know it's it's a you know one of those little Tetra packs. I think that's what they're called Tetra packs. You can pop it right down the ice. It's come out like a little straw. <laughs> I'd be careful drinking a whole right. one of those. That's what's deceptive about the cans. You have to be careful because it's a half bottle of wine, and you want you're, you're tempted to chug it. But half bottles of wine, you know, are great for camping as well because um, you know it's 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 half the amount. So you know maybe it's just you and an, and one other person, and you don't think you'll drink the whole bottle. This is a way you know to keep it from going bad. You know, what? Because once you crack that, once you crack it open. The wine, you know, because it's it's a it's a it's a living product. It starts to um, go bad, just like any of our food does. Is there any advantage to the uh, boxed wines? So yeah. it's like the same thing, same effect. When you open it up, you need to drink it by a certain amount. No, of so time. the advantage to box wine, um, well, the the box wine that we sell in the fridge. Right. The advantage is, uh, um, it's not just in a box. It's in a um, you know a, an airtight bag. Right. So impermeable so the bag you know the bag isn't getting you know oxygen a lot of oxygen air. once you add oxygen to the wine it's so, it starts to um, oxygenate right. <laughs> <That's really weird. laughs> um, and you know then it will start to really start to go and you'll need to drink it within two to three days but with the box wine um, and it being in that that airtight bag um, it's going to definitely last longer so you okay. could even take that bag out of that box and throw it right on the ice keep it in your fridge for a while Okay, so as you're as you're emptying the bag of of of, uh, of wine, it's kind of like it's not there's no air. There's kind no of air backfilling the, yeah. the the void like a glass bottle would be. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, that might be an option. It's a total. It's a yeah. it's a great option for camping. That was my idea. That was my suggestion. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's probably first box wine was Francia. I mean, box wines are actually real. I think they're really great bargains because you get quite a bit. Again, this is like, this is a dark red blend. This is three liters for $16.99. It's a good, they're good option. So this, anytime you see Moscato, Moscato is going to be a sweet wine. So if you don't like sweet wine, stay away from Moscato. And to be honest, even though Barefoot is a, a very popular brand, um, these these wines tend to be pretty sweet in general. So if you're not a sweet wine drinker, maybe um, you know steer clear of these. So look again, it's telling you like write the notes, right? It's floral, it's peachy, it's bright, citrus notes, crisp, refreshing. So these words when when you see the description, crisp, refreshing. Um, 
for the most part means they're not gonna be super sugary. And half the wines I buy, I recall the way I like the bottles. <laughs> they kind of look cool. Well, I like that. Yeah, and it's totally fine, you know, to, you know, to. And we've just tried things, right? Yeah. Oh, crimes. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it might actually be pretty good. Right. You really just never know. Yeah. Oh yeah, we should get that. My yeah. mom likes some yum Yeah, this is a great cheap. This would be perfect for camping. This is a perfect camping wine. Perfect. Courtesy of Houston Stock, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we get edited out. <laughs> Just teasing. Um, All right. Oh, wait, wait, here's a fun one. <laughs> Campo Viejo. Well, it's got the word camp in it. <laughs> this would really be a fun camping wine. Um, wine's from Rioja Tempranillo tend to have um, kind of a nice like smoked um, leathery note. They tend to be a little bit deeper in color, um, but really good acidity, which is gonna go nice with like the burgers that may have a little smoky note. This would, you know, certainly go with like a pork dish. Right, so that's like the fatty foods you were talking about earlier. Fatty foods and, um, you know, wines with good acid are gonna, are gonna be a perfect pairing. Okay. So we headed to the checkouts with our cans and bottles of wine and then we loaded up our rig and began heading out to the mountains. Okay. And we have our butter cup Chardonnay. Yeah. All right, so I got our cups. We're gonna, look, I mean, look at this, look at this setup. That's so nice. Yeah. Like that. And, you know, as Brittany mentioned, you know, you look about bottles breaking, and it goes right in the door. Mm -hmm. And that was what, through, uh, four glasses? Mm -hmm. We're gonna have it with our pizza grilled cheese. <laughs> grilled cheese pizza. <laughs> yeah, all right, which one do you pizza. want? Take the one you want. Doesn't matter. Uh, they're, all, they're both pretty the same. Yeah. Oh. They're a little warm. Well, that's fine. There you go. Dogs inside are barking away. Yeah. So. We're gonna give it a try and give you a review on it and... Save some of this. If you wanna maybe dip it, or pour some on your plate. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs>